Today we'll, we'll cover like how I actually got into ghost producing. Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. Today I'm unfortunately still sick. I was hoping that I will feel a lot better today, but I just don't. I went to the doctor. Like my ear is a little close, so I can only hear half on one ear. So it doesn't make any sense to drive over to the studio and make music and like take care of business stuff, running the label and all this kind of stuff. I would just stay at home for once and try to recover and maybe work a little bit on the couch. So before we get to today's main topic, let's first cover really quick that we have a new release on my label, which is called Accents. We have a release by Jail Collins, Back To You. You just heard it in the intro, it's really amazing. I can only recommend you to go check it out. It's the very first link in the description. Listen to the full song, put it into your playlists and support it. It's a really cool clubby influenced deep house song that I absolutely love. And yeah, since I'm sick today, no tutorial, no real vlog, no in the studio tech madness gear stuff, producing music. Today we'll just do a hangover story time, which isn't really a hangover story time. I didn't drink a lot yesterday. It's more a sick hangover story time. So yeah, welcome. This is this is basically the the segment in my vlog if everything else fails when I'm really hungover and I DJ'd in a club and can't talk the next day. Today we'll we'll cover like how I actually got into ghost producing. I think I don't really have to explain what it is. It's basically someone producing for someone else. So for example, a lot of the really really big DJs, David Guetta, Tiesto, they don't make their music themselves and some of them credit the people that work on a record and it's totally normal for example if you make a pop song and you're the producer that you of course need a songwriter or that you need someone singing because you can't do it yourself it's also totally normal that you might not be the world's greatest guitar player and your guitar skills aren't good enough to to play on that level that you're at so in my case, for example, I let someone else play the guitar. I let someone else do the singing, the writing of the lyrics. I do partially with that person that is a songwriter because they're just way more experienced. But then there are the people that actually don't do anything or don't do a lot. DJ Khaled is like one example. He just puts his annoying voice in some of the records which really ruins the song more than it actually helps it's just purely branding then there are some people that just aren't skilled enough to produce themselves they want to dj a lot of the older generation they are just djs they need someone else to actually produce and then there are the people that are just too busy to produce so some producers start as a producer get more and more and more gigs and then eventually they have so many gigs that it's almost impossible for them to produce music to find the time to produce music and even if they would say like these two or three months per year I'm taking off to just make music they're losing a lot of money let's take Steve Aoki he makes like half a million per gig if he spends two or three months in the studio making music he will lose a ton of money so it makes more sense to find someone else that produces for you, you keep on touring because you can't be replaced, at least as long as you're not wearing a mask and let another team actually make the music. And yes, these producers, like so-called producers might still overlook the entire process and say at the end, okay, that's like mine, I put my name on it, but they're not anymore really involved into the making of the song. And that was basically what I did full time for a living. This was the first time in my life that I actually made music for a living. Before I stopped, before I quit it doing ghost productions, I got a little frustrated, other people getting gigs and being famous. And I was the guy in the background getting paid really shitty. So I eventually stopped and started this vlog. It's exactly the day where I started this three years, like almost four years ago. And ever since you can basically rewatch what I did this entire time to, to get here, have a nice studio and, and quite good releases and a lot of plays on Spotify. But let's maybe start with how I got into ghost production. It 
was never my dream. I didn't even think about it, but I was back then living in Berlin really briefly, had my really, really tiny apartment within a tiny, tiny studio within my living room. And I got into contact due to partying quite a lot. I mean, Berlin, you can party every day. I met a lot of DJs, label owners. I talked to them. Some of them could produce a little, but not good enough to really mix the song and finish it and arrange it and automate it. So I started either helping them, so finishing their ideas, or I just made songs, sent them to them, and they picked out of 10 one that they liked. Maybe I changed a little, they slapped their name on it and released it. And this video shouldn't be about judging about these people or judging about the system. It's just the way it is. If it's more efficient, if it makes more money, people will start doing this kind of stuff. I'm not a big fan of it. I wish everyone would just do what they can so that the most talented person actually gets on top of the DJ Mac top 100 list and not the one that has the biggest brand or is like doing the most commercial stuff. But for me, it was the only possibility to do it for a living. The other option would be to quit making music and just have a regular day job. So I just did it. Didn't even think about it, didn't even think about it being something bad. I just always laughed about then checking other people's Instagram and Facebook and they then wrote really long posts once the song was released. I put my heart into this. I thought long about it. And all this kind of bullshit um, and they actually never made the songs. So for me it was funny, for me it was good money and a lot of people always ask how to get into ghost productions. I don't think it's something you can kind of push yourself into, it just happens. So for me I had back in the days in Berlin a release of Kindish which is the sub-label of Get Physical and this kind of gave me the stamp of approval, hey this guy actually knows what he's doing. And this way other people started approaching me or if I talked to someone in the club and told them I'm a producer and they said, hey, I'm a DJ and I want to advance and I need productions, can you maybe help me out? That was really the, the way it worked. And payment wise, that's also what a lot of people ask me, how much you actually get paid. It really, really depends on, on the production. I did a lot of mostly underground stuff. So tech house, techno, progressive house, but like the deep melodic kind and it was between five, six hundred and maybe two thousand. This really depended on the song. If vocals were involved, you usually got a lot more. It also depended on what kind of label it actually then got released at the end. And I never got anything from the royalties, um, nothing like not a master split, not a copyright split, nothing. I just got paid once and that was it basically, which was fine for me. I mean, this way I could just make what I love full time for a living. The things I didn't like was definitely sometimes not getting paid and like revisions. That's like the most annoying. Every time you work for someone else on music, you have to redo stuff and redo stuff and redo stuff because it's really hard to communicate, especially with someone that doesn't actually produce any music. They will just tell you, yeah, it needs to sound kind of faster and it needs to be uh, more uplifting, it has to bang more, and that's like stuff you can't really work with. I mean, it would be nicer to hear, A, hey, the, the bass isn't strong enough, I want more sub bass, or the rhythm of the bass, but that's not how these people communicate. So usually I got like two or three other tracks by them as a demo, and I just made something that is between those two or three songs, and usually the people were happy. So that's basically my story of how I got into Ghost producing what it felt like and, and why I stopped actually doing it. One more thing I would love to add, it's like a little story, it's like, because at the same time I was still making my own music, of course, because this is my big dream, like making my own music, releasing it, and it's working at the moment like better than I ever thought. So I was still making my music and I finished one song, sent it to a label, they told me it's not good enough, it, it, it's not cutting edge enough, it's not like deep enough, it's not cool enough. They rejected it and like, I think like seven to nine months later, cause I couldn't find a label, no one wanted it. I sold it to a guy that was pretty, pretty famous. Like we're talking in, in the millions of Facebook followers range. He sent it to the same label and they said, yeah, sure, we love it. We want to release it as fast as possible. And one month later it was out on that label and went actually into the top 10 of the overall beatport charts, which was 
I mean, I was happy about it because it was my song. I was proud of it. No one until today, I mean, no one knows about it because I, I can't talk about the people that I've been working with. But at the same time, it also showed me how fucked up this entire system is, which also led me towards not producing for other people anymore and pushing my own project as hard as I could. Because at the end, it's all about how big you are, how big the brand is, how much money you bring other people. That's the only reason why they will most likely work with you. It's a little sad, but that's the hard truth. And once you know that, or once you realize that and felt that, it's a lot easier to, to deal with than the music business industry. So anyways, I think that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know it's just me here talking a little. I hope it was still interesting. And I hope I will be ready tomorrow to be back to full energy and like get, get my ear like, I don't know. It feels like something is stuck in there. So, so yeah, one or two more days, hopefully. Thanks a lot. Sign out.